horizon as normal, the headland, and then this foreground as well, because that's actually quite dark. Often the foreground can be light because you're bringing it towards you and the dark goes away, but this is a darker headland or darker foreground. So you will need your pencil. I am just using a little A5 sheet, but if you are in your sketchbook, just turn it on its side so you have a landscape. And I would like you to use the pencil at the start and at the end of your pastel piece because that idea of darkening as well, you're going to work into some of the detail with that. I'm going to do it like this because um, I thought I'll do this one this way and then the palette knife, which is next, will be looking down because it can be tricky. I had a student contact me yesterday to say they really are struggling with the palette knife, so do not panic. It's all in the fun of it, it really is. You just learn how to navigate the paint and it can depend on how runny the paint is. Okay, so our horizon is about a third of the way down. We're gonna just take it right across. I thought I should use the pen actually. Then from the left hand side, you're gonna do about a centimeter high and it's rolling hills down to about two thirds of the way again down here. And then it rises back up again and that's looking over in Northern Ireland from one side of the water across to Carrick Fergus. Then we're gonna add in our little stena, which is this, the, I'm gonna straighten up my horizon. Feel free to do the same. A little stena line boat, which is the boat that goes between Northern Ireland and Scotland. So I am doing it just like you would imagine any type of boat to be, and then just adding on. And that is um, paint in my fingernails from last week, which I cannot get out. I've tried to cut out a lot of it. Okay, and then we're going to do our nice little rainbow here from the sides. So just let it go an archway, as you would imagine it. Doesn't need to go the full way. And then the foreground. So I was teaching a class last week and I was talking about rolling your paintbrush. You can roll your pencil the same idea. So turn your pencil on its side and just roll. You're rolling, do you see that motion there of rolling the pencil between? And then let yourself just finish off a few waves. I'll hold this if you want to catch up. Don't know why I'm so wonky. Okay. So, I meant to say for our, I didn't want to use white because we're doing really dark and moody textures, but we might be able to use the yellow. Okay, so thinking of turquoise, thinking of blood oranges, like dark, dark oranges, I want you to think back to whenever you made, oh, I've also drawn, oh no, this is the textured side. Uh, when you when you make when you make colors when you make any of your colors so whenever you make orange, you make orange using red and yellow. So let's go for blood orange, okay? And we're going to go back to front with this, and we're going to bring it here. We're going to start with the red first. So where that line is of your waves, go into that with your red and then blend it. Okay, and then you're gonna take your yellow and put it over the top and you'll start to get orange and blend. So you've used red and then yellow. 
Then you're going to do a layer of the orange that you have. If you don't have an orange, it doesn't matter. You've just made orange. And blend. See how it starts to just get nice and heavy. Then we're going to go back to our red again. And blend. So what we have there is red, yellow, orange, red. We've got this nice blood orange. Okay, so we're going to lay down the foundations first and then do the details. Now, for our C, we're going to use our blue, whatever blue you have. Fill in the whole thing. Go around your little boat, right up to the horizon. Blend. I use my ring finger. It's just because it's nice and gentle, but you can use your index finger if you prefer. Okay, yellow over the top, whoop, top of the blue. And blend. get a real green shade so we're going to go blue over the top of that again as you can see I'm turning on its side remember you can have those hard lines where you do like this and you make it very definite but we're going to come back to that okay but we're using the side which is softer so that is that area done now we want to go for the sky and what we're going to do is we're going to air in the purpley shades of the sky so you can go over the top of your rainbow with the blue and blend all about layers you know i'm always talking about layers and then we're going to go red. Blend. And we're going to go blue again over that. Lovely, moody, moody, moody. And blend. Good work. Now for our brown. I'm going to go brown in our headland and blend. Blue over the brown. Not lovely it almost goes on the gray scale okay so now we've got everything layered down we're just going to do a little bit of red for our stena and blend that in you can work all your colors around it too if you like add a bit of yellow just a little bit and then you get a nice orange again because it is an orangey color okay good work now, I'm going to add yellow just here where the white bits of the stena are. You can do the same. It's called um, creative license, I believe. So, well done. It is not, you can see that, that we could have done that with a blue sky with a, another blue sea and then just sand, which would have been yellow. But with this is you darkening it. This is you looking at the textures, looking at the depth of um, the sky. A moody sky is reflected in the sea. Always remember that. 
there's always a correlation between the sea and the sky. So let's darken a few things here, okay? We're going to darken the sea. So the sea here, um, this is where the waves are coming in. About halfway up, you're going to add blue to that over the top. Don't go the whole way down, but halfway and blend. Doesn't matter if there's different colors on your fingers already. Remember I was telling you how I love there to be a little bit of a language between the paste, the painting, whether it's a painting, whether it's a piece like this, there is, it seems to be not focusing. There we go. So it's the same with pastel, there'd be a correlation between everything. With that same blue, oh, my fingers have done it for me. I want you now to roll over. It might feel awkward to do, but roll over with your blue to add texture. And then for up here, what you're actually going to do is you're going to use the blue to lighten. So about the top, um, about the right hand side, up at the top, you're going to push into that and really start to change how it looks. So about the top quarter, you see there? And then we're going to blend so it's a wee bit softer. And the same with over here, you're going to add in your blue. And then we start to change the depth. Well done. And now the last thing is just for our mountains here this is where you're going to add texture here you're going to roll oh sorry not i didn't mean to ah that's our brown i meant to use our brown sorry take your brown again and that is where you're going to add texture in the background remember landscape land is always quite rugged and there's actually little houses over there so you can imply that they're there if you like Okay, and use then your brown to add in a little bit of detail and a wee bit of a shadow with your boat. Well done, I'll hold it up properly. So what you've done is you've taken on this guy here. Oh, we forgot our rainbow. I wanted to use just yellow for that all your colors really for that so let's do that that will brighten things up so our yellow for the side so just wisping it over same with our green wisping it over red this is not the right way my children could tell you by the way red and yellow and pink and green orange and purple and i can so do it properly if you want to do it properly i'm just going with freestyle here and then our blue as well and our orange look at that it brightens it up so as i was saying we have done a we have made a representation of that using soft pastels the reason i wanted you to use your soft pastels was to get dirty again because by the time we get to palette knife it's you start to you know, when you're using a brush, you're away from it. When you're palette knife, you really do have to get involved. And I wanted you to get involved. And I also wanted you to see, look at that, another lovely piece, which has made colors that you mix, using colors that you mix. So we really are going deeper into the colors and shades. Well done. And I will see you in the next video. And hopefully soon, this, this is being painted. This is being painted this weekend because um you may have known you may not have known but uh, my previous pa is called Gemma, and she sadly passed away last weekend so just feels like everything's a little bit um uh a little bit disorganized in the space here because we had to wait to get people in and different things but anyway you don't need to know that um i'm so glad that you're here and i look forward to seeing you in the next video with palette knife and our usual red, yellow, blue, black and white paint and a canvas. That would be a good idea.